In this video I will go through how you can copy a CSV file to Lakehouse table using a notebook in Max Fabric. Also I will go through some options and things that you need to consider when reading different types of CSV files. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering and today we are going to start covering notebooks. I have already done an introduction video to notebooks and the link to that video can be found in the description. Also all the files and codes that I will be using in today's tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. But now let's open up Fabric and check out how to read different kinds of CSV files using notebooks. Let's start from my lake house, where I have created this new folder Fabric DE Series 23 under the file section of the lake house. In this folder I have two CSV files, movies1 and movies2.csv. We will start with the movies1, so let's check out the contents of that CSV file. This CSV file has a really standard content with a header and few rows of data separated by commas. Next we would like to read this CSV file to Lakehouse table using a notebook. Here I have a blank notebook and I've already attached this notebook to the Lakehouse that I just showed to you. And we can also navigate to that same folder using this notebook view here. But now we would like to read in this movies1.csv to a delta table. We can start by adding a new code cell here. And here I have some code that would read in a CSV file from that location. And let's break down a bit what this code does. Basically we are loading in a CSV file from the path that I have specified here. And that path is pointed to this folder and that movies1.csv file. And then we would like to display that data frame that comes as a result of that code. So let's run this and see what happens. This should finish really fast. And now it is already done. And we can see the data here, but it is not correct yet. We can see that our header is now on the first row of data. And as a column names, we have this underscore C0, C1 and C2 columns. This is not the result what we want. So basically we would like to tell to this read function here that we would like to use a header when reading that CSV file. So that these would be the column names. So let's do that. And here I have a more refined version of that code. And here we are giving this option header true to this function when we are reading in that CSV file. And then we are again displaying that data frame that comes out from that CSV file. Let's run this and see what happens. And we can see that this looks now a lot better. We can see that we have that header in place and then we have those rows of data there. Now we could actually write this data frame to a lakehouse table. I will add a piece of code here at the end of this cell that that will do that writing for us. And with this code we can read in that data frame to a delta table in our lake house. So basically we are using the data frame that we just read in. Then we are telling to Spark to write it and using the mode overwrite, which means that we would overwrite the data if the table already exists there. And then the format of the table will be delta. And then we are going to use this save as table function and give our table the schema and the table name where that table would go. And now let's run this and let's see what happens. This could take a little bit longer since now we are creating that table also. Actually this time our code didn't work because it cannot found the schema that I have specified here. But we can go to our lake house and create that schema for us and then that code should work. So let's go here and click new schema. And let's give our schema a name and then hit create. And now we have that schema in place. So let's try to run this again and let's see what happens. Can we write it there now? And now it went through fine and we should have that new schema here with that new table under that schema. And there we have that movies one table. So now we have managed to read in our first CSV file to a lakehouse table. Next we would like to read in our second CSV file. Let's go back to our lake house and let's check out the contents of that second CSV file. As we can see the data in this CSV file is exactly the same that we had in that previous file. But now we don't have a header and now we are separating our records with this semicolon here. So let's go back to our notebook and let's check out how we can read in this CSV file. Let's try to read in this CSV file without specifying any options. And let's see what happens. 
Now we can see that all our data is in three rows, that is correct, but all the data is in one column, that is not correct. So now we would need to tell the Spark to use this semicolon as separator when reading in that CSV file. And next let's do that. And here I have the code that would give this option delimiter to this CSV file reading function and tell it to use the semicolon as separator when reading in that file. Let's see how this would work. Now we can see that our data looks better. We have the data in three rows as it should be and then we have also three columns as it should be. But our column names look a bit funky since these are the default column names that the Spark uses when there is no header for the CSV file. Next I will show to you how you can add column names when reading this kind of CSV file without a header. But before we do that I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you and that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. Here I have the code that would actually add the column names to that data frame when reading in that CSV file. Let's break this down a bit. So here we have that row that would actually read in that CSV file. We can see that we have that same option that we'd had previously but now we also have this schema option. And this schema option is going to use this schema that we have defined here that would tell that we have these columns film, year and rating. Also we have to change the data type of of this schema to this truck type in order to pass it to this schema because it doesn't read in this kind of a raw JSON schema. I will also print out that struct schema that we are creating here from that JSON so you can see it how it looks. Also in order us to get this code to work we need to do a few imports. We are importing some types so we get that struct type here and also we import JSON so we can use these JSON functions here. But now let's run this and let's see what happens. Now it is running. Now our cell has run and we can see that we printed this struct here that is basically describing the schema that we have here but a little bit in a different format that is able to be used here in the schema option when passing it to this spark read function. Also as we can see now our data frame looks correct so we have that header in place and we have the rows correct as well. So next we could uncomment this write function here so we would be able to write that data frame to a delta table. And now it is done and we should have another table here. And there we have movies underscore two. So now we have managed to read in both of our CSV files to these tables here in our lake house. Also I want to show to you how you can generate this JSON schema here easily. If we would like to for example generate it from this data frame that we are using here. And this would be the code. So basically we are using that data frame dot schema dot JSON and then we could run this and as an output that will give us this schema that we have here. So this would be a very convenient way of generating that schema. Now you should have an understanding how to read in different types of CSV files using notebooks in Marx Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.